السلام عليكم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي uh, This is a topic that I I've, I personally feel strongly about uh, what my life kind of I, I actually learned quite a bit a few years ago uh, about this topic. I mean, I think growing up, we've always f sort of felt that um, there are some people who are different than us. But I think that w for me, it became more personal uh, many years ago when I met a friend of mine. Uh, at the time, I didn't know her, but she was someone who came up to me in the masjid and she told me her story. And ever since I learned her story, I I've, I've just been friends with her ever since. And it's just been something that's uh, changed the way I've seen a lot of uh, parts of, of life really and usually I like to share her story because her story is very inspirational but there's something I, I want to add about her story and it's something that I hope that we can it's something that you and I can actually take home and implement so what she told me that day when she met me was that she many years ago had a daughter and when her daughter was, I think, around three or so, she stopped talking. So she grew, she was born able to speak and able to, to do the things that, you know, most children that age are able to do. But then what happened is around the age of three, she stopped talking and her teachers didn't know why. She told the, you know, they told the parents. She took her to the doctor. And what she found out after some testing is that her daughter had a rare genetic disorder called MPS. And the doctor informed this mother that uh, due to this disorder, her daughter would slowly uh, lose her faculties. So she would lose her ability to do things for herself, her ability to walk, her ability even to sit up, um, eventually lose the ability to even swallow properly her own saliva. And at this point when this mother was telling me this, she was telling me that because of the inability to swallow properly, and this is something that just never even crossed my mind as one of the many lists of blessings that we should be grateful for, but our ability to properly swallow our saliva keeps us from choking to death. And we don't always realize this. I mean, how, how many times a minute do we swallow, but we don't say alhamdulillah like every time. I never even thought about it. But this, just this one blessing that Allah has given us actually is keeping us alive, which is amazing. And she said that because of that inability, she has to suction um, so that they don't choke. But she said that after she had, um, a little bit later, she had a second daughter. And she started to, they started to see some, uh, I, I think they may have gotten tested um, when they were babies. And she found out that the second daughter also had the same genetic disorder of MPS. And then she had a third daughter and found out that her third daughter also had MPS. So now my friend was telling me that she had three daughters with MPS. And she's being told that this is what's going to happen to your daughters. There's no cure at this time. And you, sh you, you, know, you, shouldn't, really, you shouldn't expect your daughter to live um, even past their teenage years. And imagine a mother hearing this. Uh, and then she had a fourth child with severe autism. I've never met anyone um, with, with that kind of, uh, obviously that kind of strength to be given that kind of uh, challenge and that kind of blessing all in one. And I'll explain uh, how she then dealt with it and what I learned from her. But what really struck me was a few points. And that is first, she was talking about her life and in her conversation about her life, she said, quote, I'm drowning in gratitude. And why that struck me so much is because we have, we can't, I can't, we can't wrap our minds around something like that, hearing something like that. And yet we, with our lives, have trouble sometimes being thankful. We have sometimes trouble being grateful, although we have, you know, what would be considered complete ease in comparison to what she has. And yet she was saying she was drowning in gratitude. And what that taught me is that um, ease, 
and hardship aren't just about what you're given in life, but ease and hardship have to do with the state of your heart and the state and, 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 and one's relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the help that Allah gives. So the powerful lesson I learned from her life uh, among many was that if Allah helps you, then you can handle even the greatest storms. And not only can you handle them, but to be able to be standing in that storm and being grateful, not only that you're surviving, but that you're thriving, that absolutely amazed me. And to me, that was a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, you know, as, as there's a, a hikmah that says that, you know, there is nothing that is difficult if you seek it through Allah, and there's nothing that is easy if you seek it through yourself. That reality was really shown to me by watching her life. But there's something else that I learned from watching her and from throughout the years uh, that I've learned from her. And that is uh, the absolute, uh, in the, the, the power of the community to either build these families or to completely cut them down. What I was amazed to discover is there was another woman who was her neighbor at the time who had gone through a terrible tragedy um, in which her she lost her son in a very uh, painful way and he died in a very painful way through an accident when he was very young. And I was speaking to both of these women, these what I consider giants, and um, what they both told me, and, and subhanAllah, I stood there and I listened to both of them tell me the same, the same thing, which is that despite everything that they had gone through and all of their challenges, uh, their greatest pain came from the way the community ostracized them. Their greatest pain, and that blew me away, their greatest pain came from the way the community treated them and the way the community um, sort of alienated and ostracized them. And I was just amazed because that is something that you and I can do. That's, that's such an easy test to pass. You see, everybody's given tests, right? Everyone agree? Everybody is given tests. Some people have harder tests than others, but everybody is tested. Now imagine that our test if we ourselves are not tested in that way, but our test is to support those who are tested in that way. That means your test is easy, right? And for us to fill that test is something that I can't, you know, that's, I can't find an excuse. For, for our only test to be to give compassion and support, you know, because this social support, psychologists have found that it is absolutely invaluable, that the social support, that, 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 that the effect of social support to help families with, with special needs children, it, it, it can't even be measured. And yet the community failed in that test. And they did not only did they not support these families, but they even shunned them. At times did not include them and ostracize them from the community. So the reason why I wanna point that out is that's something everyone can do. Regardless of your own personal situation, regardless of whether or not you yourself uh, have someone in your family who has special needs, but what you can do is you can support those who do. And then finally, I wanna wrap up with this, something also that just shook me. Uh, when she found out about, about her children, uh, she shared with this story with me. She said that her husband was heartbroken and, and she was obviously also, it was a very difficult news to hear, but what her husband said to her at the time was, you know, in his, in his sadness, he said, I feel like I'm looking at three graves. And what, what she responded um, was something that I never forget and something actually her husband would never forget. And even to this day, he, you know, I went recently to um, a fundraiser that they had put on for MPS Awareness. And he stood up, this was just recently, a few months ago, he stood up and he said, I learned from my wife. And what he said was that when I said that, she responded and said, I see three doors to Jannah. And that's how she viewed it. And subhanAllah, that's so powerful because that's exactly right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a path for each of us. And Allah gives us different opportunities to reach him. 
and everyone has a role to play. And I'm saying this because everyone has a role to play. There is a role that she has to play and there's a role that we as a community have to play for these families. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for all those who struggle. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us that, that one body that she spoke about where if one side of the body is in pain, the entire body responds. <coughs> so I got two questions. Um, I'll do my best. Uh, one of them asks, what's the call to action? Um, what can we do and how can we make sure that the families like this one you mentioned are more welcome? <coughs> Um, I'd like to know what it is that we may be doing knowing or unknowingly that we should stop doing. That's a great question. Uh, in each situation, it'll be different, but what I would say is there's two things that I would suggest. One is reaching out personally to those families, um, individually to those families, uh, and just just reach out and just ask them because I can't answer the question for them of what they need for support, but just you reaching out will make a big difference to them and just find out how it is that you can support them. Sometimes it's just by, by being there for the caretaker. Sometimes it's not like they need you to come take care of them. I mean, they're not going to, they're not going to hire you to come take care of their child, but what they need is maybe someone take care of the caretaker. Because what oftentimes happens whenever there is someone in the family who's either special needs or sick is that all the, um, <coughs> this, the caretaker themselves doesn't always take care of themselves, if that makes sense. And, and sometimes the caretaker needs taking care of. And that's, um, that's a huge, uh, that's a huge like action that you're taking to help support the one who's supporting the, the, the one with special needs. The other question is about, um, are special needs children adored to Jannah? Example for the mother and father, like for example, the death of a child miscarriage. And, and actually there is a specific, or more than one uh, specific a hadith about this case of a parent who loses the child. And that there, th that child in one hadith says that the child waits at the door of Jannah for, for the parent. Uh, and and that there's a special uh, door um, for for those for those parents and and their children to enter through Jenna into Jenna. Oh uh, no, sorry, not a special door, but a special house is made for them um, in Jenna. And um, th that's something that th the the reward that's given to parents uh, who have children who've passed away, and of course. Uh, children with special needs is very very high and that was the reason why my friend you know that's why she she saw it that way as three doors to jannah she recognized that this was a, a special path that allah has allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen for her uh, in order to enable her to get to jannah and and that, honestly that's exactly what it is any kind of challenge that we're given in life uh, and we respond to it properly it becomes uh, it can become an opportunity and in the case of losing a child, there's specific mention about that uh, in, in the hadith. 